Welcome back. Uh, haven't done one of these in a couple of weeks. I do apologize for that. Uh, but we're back, and uh, that was the intro and solo to not what I was just playing. That's actually the first heavy metal riff of all time. And I'm going to tell you why in a few minutes why I feel that way. Uh, but the video that you just watched, that was the intro. I did the intro because it's so fucking heavy and cool I wanted to play it. Uh, and solo to the metal masterpiece War Pigs by Tony Iommi and Black Sabbath coming in at number 56 on Guitar World Magazine's Top 100 Solos of All Time. As an aside, uh, Guitar World Magazine also put out a list a few years ago of the top metal songs of all time, of which War Pigs was number one. That is not an assessment I will argue against. Uh, but it does lead me to throw my hat into the proverbial ring of giving my opinion on uh, what I think, uh, who I think were the uh, inventors of the genre of heavy metal and what was the first heavy metal song. Uh, the general consensus being that it indeed was Black Sabbath, though there are naysayers out there and people who disagree with that assessment and say there, there were other songs that were, could be considered heavy metal before the arrival of Black Sabbath. Uh, I disagree with that uh, assertion. Uh, I will uh, contest that it was indeed Black Sabbath who were the pro... Uh, pro... What's the word I'm looking for? The progenitors? The progenitors? Is that a word? Is that the word? I, I don't know. Um, I'm going to go look it up. Hold on a second. Holy shit, it was progenitors, the progenitors of heavy metal. Uh, and uh, I'm going to tell you why I feel that way. And uh, at the close of the 60s, as the 60s were coming to a close, uh, rock and roll music was getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And uh, since the onset of guitar distortion just a few years earlier, uh, bands were experimenting with uh, more of a, a heavy, uh, louder, faster, uh, noisier, more distorted uh, sound. Uh, the Beatles with Helter Skelter and Led Zeppelin with Communication Breakdown and uh, Iron Butterfly with Inagata da Vida Baby. Uh, King Crimson with 21st Century Schizoid Man. Uh, some even say Summertime Blues by uh, the band Blue Cheer was the first heavy metal song. Geddy Lee of Rush said that uh, Summertime Blues was the first heavy metal song. Uh, now, I probably don't disagree musically with much that uh, Geddy Lee would say, but I disagree with you, Geddy Lee, on this point. Uh, I know the song Summertime Blues by Blue Cheer, and it is a hard rock song. It's, it's hardly metal. Um, I would also contest that a, any song called Summertime Blues, uh, no matter how heavy it is, cannot be a metal song. Uh, you know, uh, that's, that's kind of a joke, but it's close, also close to the truth, you know, like, now, metal is more than just the, the sound. It's, uh, it's an attitude and it's the lyrics and it's so much more than just uh, being loud and heavy. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, summertime blues, metal. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, these bands were basically, they were not metal bands. Uh, these songs were one-offs. They were experiments. They were, uh, you know, bands experimenting with a heavier sound and and I, I would say the closest of all of these w would have to be the opening two minutes to 21st Century Schizoid Man by uh, King Crimson. Uh, like I said earlier, these bands, uh, under the guise of heavier, uh, uh, under the guise of, of louder, faster, noisier, uh, few bands realize that slow and plodding and menacing could be just as heavy, uh, if not heavier, than louder, faster. And uh, the opening for uh, 21st Century Schizoid Man is all of those things. It's slow, it's plodding, it's, it's quite heavy. But uh, then it turns into a jazz fusion uh, instrumental for the remaining five minutes. And uh, I, I'm still hard-pressed to call 21st Century Schizoid Man a metal song. Uh, it, it took the, the vision of Tony Iommi and Geezer Butler, and I'll, I'll give all the credit to Tony Iommi and Geezer Butler for forging the sound of Black Sabbath, because Geezer was the main lyricist and uh, Tony Iommi was the main riff master uh, songwriter for Black Sabbath uh, to create the, the sound and tone of Black Sabbath. 
And uh, they, their vision, they realized that that slow uh, plotting could be uh, just as heavy, if not heavier than anything else. And uh, they put that to the test with the uh, with track one, side one of their debut album, uh, the song Black Sabbath, the one I was playing at the beginning of the video here. Uh, that was metal. That was heavy metal. That was slow. That was doom. That was gloom. That was scary. It was evil. It was it scared the shit out of me when I was a 12-year-old kid and heard it for the first time. Uh, that was heavy metal. And even the riff itself... Uh, it's it's an inverted triad with a diminished fifth. Uh, in, in classical music, it's known as uh, Diabolus in Musica, uh, the devil in music. And, and whether Tony Iommi knew that or not, uh, if he knew it, then it just adds uh, all the more mystique to the, uh, the great song. But uh, even if he didn't know it, it hardly matters. But uh, it had never been used before in rock and roll music. It was more of a classical music construct. And uh, it just sounds evil. And uh, it was evil in that song. And uh, so anyway, I, I will argue that that was the first heavy metal song. Uh, they were a, the first heavy metal band. Start to finish, track one to track ten of that album was heavy metal. And... Uh, just uh, just a, a great opening to the genre and a uh, classic, classic album. And uh, I'm just going to leave that there. And, uh, and that's my opinion, and you may disagree with it, and that's fine. But uh, it's my opinion, and I'm sticking with it. But uh, anyway, I'm going to move on to the solo for War Pigs briefly right now. The uh, It's Tony Iommi's only uh, solo on this list, and probably the most uh, deserving. It's probably his most famous solo. Uh, excellent solo, uh, great great opening to the solo where he bounces uh, his notes off the open uh, E string to fill out the sound because they are just a, they were just a three piece band, and uh, great opening to the solo and some classic little blues bluesy type riffs in there and a really great little uh, riff, uh, kind of a trademark riff of Tony Iommi. Uh, this little wait, I'm playing it wrong. Uh, that, that's tricky little tricky little riff to get up to speed. But uh, anyway, uh, great solo and uh, well-deserving of being on this list. Uh, I also think I absolutely crushed the tone on this one with Bias FX. Uh, really happy with the tone. Uh, it sounds to me exact and uh, uh, really happy with the tone on this one. And uh, so anyway, Bias FX is just an amazing piece of software. I, I find I'm relying on it more and more uh, with every uh, solo I do on this project. And now that I've got it dialed in correctly, I, I had something screwy going on at first. The, the first 30 or 40 videos, I was, I was uh, running it through my amp and uh, it just wasn't working because I wasn't getting a, a pure clean signal. So I went out and I bought myself a, a, an audio interface and things are working out much better now. So anyway, that's it for today. I'm uh, moving on to some Joe Satriani and Sat Boogie, which is nearly completed and uh, was a lot of work and because it's like three and a half minutes long of just nonstop uh, wankery, uh, Joe Satriani wankery. And uh, that's coming up next. I'll have that probably in a few days. So, uh, as always, thanks for watching and uh, keep on rocking. Thanks very much. Take care. Ciao.